Guys, how we doing? I want to talk some safety play today uh, with you just about uh, so many things that are so important about safety play. Uh, Safety is, I will say, uh, most important part of, of anybody's defense, okay? whether it be a 3-4 defense or whatever, 4-3, whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, safety play is the most important. Um, you know, and you can just, I can give you tens of thousands of examples of, of, of great defenses at Blaine High School that we've had. Uh, and, and not so great defenses that we've had. And a lot of it has to do with the correlation of how our safeties play and are they good at what they do. And so um, we're going to go over the basics today and we're going to go over it kind of fast. Um, and, you know, press pause and rewind and pause and rewind if you play safety. Um, you want to be able to understand this and ask questions if you don't. Um, but first and foremost, how we align. Um, our alignment is inside shade of number two and eight yards off the line of scrimmage. So as the offense breaks the huddle or no huddle, whatever they're doing, we need to find the number two eligible to your side and line up inside shade and eight yards off. So here's a couple examples. So this is a 22 set where there's two receivers on each side. Uh, you would simply find the, the second person in, eligible receiver in, uh, and you would line up inside shade of that person, eight yards off the line of scrimmage, okay? Um, now what happens if there's not a number two to your side, maybe it's a 31 formation offensive formation, or maybe it's a 21 offensive formation. So let's take a look at those. So a 31 offensive formation would be three eligibles to one side and just one on the other. So you would again find number two, if this happens to be your side, you would find number two and you would be inside shade of them and you'd be eight yards off. But what happens on the other side now, if there isn't a number two, so you look at there's a, there's a number one eligible receiver there, you scroll down in, and then the next person's an offensive tackle. Well, if this is the case in a 31 set, we need to be triangled between one and number three. So basically, if you had to do it, we're going to be right in the middle of the center and the quarterback because we need to be able to, to, be able to drive on number three if he ran a, a deeper post. Uh, but we're also going to be downhill runners, run defenders in the alleys on both sides. We can explain that more uh, you know, when we get into the fall. In a 21 set, um, again, you got two eligibles to one side. This is Mount Baker's basic formation. So you've got one, and number two here is the tight end now. Okay, so if number two is not a wide out, tight end in the scenario. You're still inside shape. You're still eight yards off the line of scrimmage. Now what happens on the other side? Well, there's just one eligible. You got a, we got a wide receiver. You scroll down. The next person's an offensive tackle. Well, we don't need you over the center anymore because this person's so close to you. You've got two backs. You're going to be right over top of that weak tackle or that weak side of the formation, and now you're simply reading that offensive tackle for a run fit. Okay, uh, so that was there is some differences there at 22, 31, and 21. All right, now when you're reading number two, okay, you're basically looking at number two and, and focusing in, and you're trying to read is it a run or a pass? You're trying to get a run pass read by looking at number two. So number two will either run block or he'll run a pass right. Okay, and when he run blocks, there is some different things to consider and, and, and think about. Um, first off, what is your run fit? So your, these are the two things. Your run fit is the gap between number two and number one. So in this scenario, if number two goes and stalks the Sam backer, your run fit is in this gap between number one and number two. That's your gap in, in our defense and in most defenses. Okay, um, same thing over here in 31. If this number two blocks, this is your gap between one and two. Now, what about an alley? An alley created by the offense. So if we've got our sand backer that's attached to this tight end, and we got some people, you know, everybody's scrolling down and they're running a counter play or something, or they're kicking out this sand backer, you have this alley now. So you've red run, you come downhill. Offenses create new alleys and gaps all the time by pulling linemen and, and crisscrossing blockers and doing all that. So you got to understand what's your run for. You can also read pass routes, and you need to understand either it's a plus five route, meaning like this receiver goes plus five yards. If so, you're going to stay with them. But if this receiver runs a shorter route underneath five yards, this is where we can switch with the corner in a zone defense, just like basketball. Where we can pass off things, um, you know, it, 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 it basically, you know, somebody sets the screen, you switch on a screen, those kinds of things. So if we run a, an out and a slant behind it, the corner could jump the out route, and the safety could be sitting right here for the slant route. So those are things that we would say in, 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 and out, out, out. But if a route gets pushed to plus five, 